Hi, my name is Cheryl. Welcome to my channel, Homeridge Studio. Today, I am going to show you how to make three St. Patrick's Day signs. They can be uh, standalone shelf signs or you can pop them in a tiered tray. So let's craft. The first project, we're going to make this uh, shamrock sign. This paper is from Hobby Lobby. Um, I have these shamrocks from Michaels. They were 40% off and that paper from Hobby Lobby was actually 50% off so it was like 30 some cents. Um, I have this sign from the Dollar Tree with the wood beads on it and just to uh, remove the paper we're going to uh, pop the clips back there and remove the board from the sign. It's really easy. So I'm kind of just sizing up the sign. Um, it's not in the best shape. There's paper hanging off and I'm just uh, going to glue this uh, craft paper, which you get at the Dollar Tree, onto the front of the sign instead of trying to paint it or glue other paper on it. I'm going to make sure that you can't see through it at all. And so just glue it on with the glue stick, smooth it down, uh, cut the uh, remainder paper off and then I'm sanding it. And you're probably going to have to smooth it down again because it'll buckle up a little bit. Now we're going to take the craft paper or the um, poster paper, measured it, cut it, same size as the sign. Um, I probably should have done a better job cutting this because of the pattern. I wasn't paying attention to the pattern. I probably should have got it more even, but that's okay. You're not going to see it so much after we put the clovers in. So I just hot glue, or, or not hot glue, I glue stick that down too. And now I'm just kind of taking my clovers and seeing how I want to place them. This first one I'm painting with a green paint. Um, you can take any green paint you want. This green paint is called uh, let's see, leaf green, and it's from Deco Art Crafters Acrylic Paint. So I painted that and I put it aside. It's probably even best to paint all your pieces first and then glue stick down everything else, but I kind of did it backwards because I wasn't sure what I was going to do. So the second leaf, I put, um, it's a apple barrel gloss um, called Beach Comer. I probably wouldn't use gloss, but that's all I had. But I love this beach comber beige. It's really awesome. So I painted this second clover and then now I'm taking this folk art metallic antique gold. I use this stuff a lot. I have a big bottle of it. And because this is kind of like a Mackenzie child thing, I'm going around these clovers with gold. And I'm doing the same thing to the medium clover. Um, I also, I don't think I showed you, but I put um, black around the edges too. So you have that Mackenzie Child thing going. And so now I'm trying to figure out which way this is going to look good in the sign. And I don't know if it's an optical illusion as you might see in a second here, but it almost looks like that. Um, frame is kind of crooked, very crooked. And it could be because it's from the Dollar Tree. And it looks like it's longer on the bottom and shorter on top. But after I put the clovers on, you really can't tell much. And so I'm just going to kind of place them. And I think I want it to, you know, pop out, give it some depth a little bit. So I'm going to take that, uh, square it's a wood square and you get those from the Dollar Tree too anything to give it lift and so I hot glued those on actually I used E6000 because I don't want them to fall apart and I felt that it needed something more and to me it still looked crooked so I'm trying to figure out what I can do to make it look um, symmetrical and not so crooked so I took the beachcomber and the uh, green paint and I mixed it together to give it a color between the beige and the green.
and I did paint the sides of these clovers too because you will be able to see them but if you don't it's no big deal and then I took some of this green and I just took it and um, just brushed it gave it streaks right across the top of the clover and then I glued that on and there you have it simple quick easy and it's ready for a tear tray so the second project we're going to do is we're going to make a gnome sign i love this little gnome guy kiss me i'm irish it's so cute it's so classic the saying is anyway decals are from the dollar tree and that sign is from the dollar tree too i'm just taking some wax paper and I'm going to cover my countertop there so it protects it. And again, I'm using that beach comber and I'm just going to paint that sign. I think I put, it's acrylic, I think I put three coats on there because you could see the words through. And I just took a hair dryer and uh, dried it between coats. You see there's some imperfections there and obviously I painted the sides too. And see how that paper is kind of hanging off the edge there. Um, I just do the best that you can. I just did a sanding and I took that green and I put the green on kind of to distress it a little bit because most of the stuff that we're working with is the color green for St. Patrick's Day and it kind of hides all the imperfections in these Dollar Tree signs. And so you can't see, I'm out of the screen there. Hopefully I'll pop back in in a minute. There I go. Um, just brushing very lightly along the sides. I like to do the corners a little bit darker just to give it some interest. And now I'm just kind of doing a dry brush with that hint of green across the sign. And this is what it looks like. So now we're ready for the decals. Dollar Tree has some great decals this year. They have the trucks and the gnomes and leprechauns and all kinds of them. So just make sure when you put it on that that um, clip is on the top. I've done that before. I put it on the side or upside down and then realized, oh, the clip is on wrong. So, um, and now I'm just, you know, seeing how I want to position it. And I kind of like that. I tried a new technique. Um, I decided I didn't want to move it and try to wiggle it around and fuss with it. So, I picked it up and I put my podge under it without moving the whole thing. And then I picked up the other side and put my podge under that. Don't do this. <laughs> the best thing to do is just take that sign and paint one coat of Mod Podge on it and let it dry completely. You can take a hair dryer to it. See how it's sticking on there and I ended up tearing that decal a little bit. You can't really see in the finished project, but um, th this was just, I don't know. I don't know why I did it. I was just trying to figure it out as I was going on. Um, it wasn't sticking right. It had bubbles in it. So yeah, once again, just Mod Podge it, take a hair dryer to it, let it dry. Then, then you can put your decals on it and smooth them out so there's no bubbles and then after that after you're done then you can put one last coat of Mod Podge on top of it kind of like what I'm doing here the sign turned out okay you can't tell I just had to really work with it so not the best technique that I use there and this is what it looks like and i actually like it so much i think i'm gonna put it up on my shelf okay for the third and final project i'm going to make the this mason jar 
Um, I got it at the Dollar Tree from Christmas. I didn't take that sticker off. I'll have to do goo gone on that, and then it'll smell like orange. But anyway, um, I painted it with white Waverly chalk paint, and in a minute you'll see I'm going to turn to the parchment color. Um, Pick whatever decal you want. If you want to put a truck on it, you can, or a saying. But I'm going to make this kind of like a mason jar that has clovers in it. So here's that plaster, Waverly chalk paint. I didn't like the white. I wanted it a little bit darker. This plaster is my favorite color. And because I have a coat on already, I just needed one more coat. That's the beauty of chalk paint. You don't need as much on it as you do typically, usually as you do when you use acrylic. So now I'm taking up a little bit of that green and I'm kind of just in some of the beige too. And I'm kind of just lightly giving that jar kind of a hint of green color because we're going to put the clovers on it. And I'm just kind of filing it down with the, or sanding it down with that sanding block. And I believe that's from the Dollar Tree. And then some twine from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to wrap it around the top. I would probably finish painting this first before you wrap that around the top. Um, here, I just didn't really know what I was going to do with it. And then after I was done, I realized, yeah, I want to make that top look like metal. So anyway, no biggie. It was just, it just took a little bit more time. So now that's what it looks like painted in the twine wrapped around. Now I'm going to take this black and it's just um, apple barrel black matte uh, acrylic paint. And I'm just going to go up kind of like the lid with the creases in it. And so I just drag that up and you don't want to cover the whole thing black. You just kind of want to make it look like it has grooves in it. And now I'm taking the silver. Um, it is from Folk Art and it's brushed metal acrylic paint and it's called brushed silver. And I'm doing the same technique. I'm just taking it and dipping it in the silver and pulling it up. And you probably want to get more silver on that than black. So it's starting to look kind of like metal. And yes, I paint with my fingers too. Sometimes if I use a baby wipe or a, a um, paper towel, it, it'll get like little fuzzes on it. Um, I'm just showing you there. I brushed real quickly the back of it. So if you wanted to turn it around and you didn't want it to have shamrocks on it and you wanted to use it, you could put a flower on it, a saying on it, you could put mason whatever you want. So it could be a front and a back. And now I realize it kind of needs something else on top than just the clovers in there. So, or the clover decals. So I just put a simple shoelace bulb and then I have this string um, a necklace from the Dollar Tree and I'm just cutting one of those clovers out and I'm going to put it in the middle of the bow. And then the ends, um, I don't like how they're unfinished, so I'm going to put these green beads, and it comes in the uh, multicolor pack like this at the Dollar Tree. And these are the green ones I just pulled out. And that little tool there, um, you can put it in the hole. Be careful, I have poked my finger before, and they're very sharp. You just put it in the hole of the bead because the bead is wood, and you kind of clean it out all the little wood fragments in there that's what I use that for it's a great tool to have and then these little scissors are from the Dollar Tree and they're pretty awesome too if you want to cut little things they're pretty sharp I'm pretty happy with them I was hesitant to buy them and then one of my friends said no you got to get them it's great and they are 
So anyway, um, you put tape around the edge of, or the end of the um, jute twine and then you can pop that in real quick in the bead. And here I'm just gluing it down so it holds the bead on and I put a knot at the end of the bead too. So I glued them down on both sides, which I should have waited until I was done, but I glued it first because again, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. And now I'm gonna put a coat of Mod Podge on this whole entire jar here, including the top and the sides. So you, you know, protect it and seal it. And then you let that dry, which I didn't do in my previous one, but I did this time. And I'm just picking off different um, clovers, different shapes, different colors. Um, I'm not using any of the sparkly ones though. And then I realized I need some little teeny ones. I didn't have really teeny ones. Um, they did here on this one and I had to cut them out. They weren't already like pressed like you could peel them out I cut them out and make those as close to a circle as possible because you'll be able to see the edges the other ones you don't really see the edges but these little ones you could and I just kind of cut them out in a square and it didn't look right so I had to pick them off and redo them I hope that makes sense and then uh, after that a coat of Mod Podge and we're all set and this is what the final project looks like. And I love it. I'm so happy with all three of these projects. I hope you like them also. And thank you once again for watching my channel. Um, if you like what you see, please hit the like button and subscribe because it helps my channel grow. And Stay tuned because I'll be doing another video very soon at St. Patrick's Day stuff, probably some gnomes and um, some other crafty little ideas I have in mind. And once again, thank you and have a blessed day.